Sing that song, Hosanna. Praise is right. Praise is rising. Eyes are turning to you. We turn to you. Hope is stirring. find strength to face the day and in your presence all our fears are washed away are washed away
glory. Holy is the Lord God Almighty. The earth is filled. Oh, holy is the Lord. Holy is the Lord God Almighty. The earth is filled with His glory. Holy is the Lord. Spirit here with me. I have a faith that can't be tamed. I have a joy that can't be tamed. Oh, what more could I gain? I will see the Lord. I will see. God, together, Lord, we thank you. Thank you, Lord. 
Father God, you are faithful, you are holy, you are worthy, King of Kings. Father God, you are good and faithful. Mighty Jesus, we thank you. Hallelujah. Praise God. What a wonderful presence of God tonight. Numbers of requests we want to lift up. Praying for Lene Baca, 15 years old. is on a 72-hour suicide watch. We want to pray God break through in her life. Uh, praying for Vanessa Sam Samudio. Is a, has a rare anemia, needs a miracle. Uh, Victoria, we prayed for her earlier in the week is in stable condition but still needs a miracle. Uh, Sammy Perez, 23-year-old with heart failure, needs a miracle. We want to pray for Anastasia. This is a uh, pastor's wife in Verado, Arizona, was diagnosed with cancer, believing God for a quick healing in her body. We want to pray for Ashlyn, uh, had a surgery, but is still having symptoms. Doctors cannot find the problem. We need to pray there. We want to pray for Amore and Daisy Sandoval, a one-year-old and one-month-old, diagnosed with RSV, but the one-month-old is they're looking to transport to Phoenix if no improvement happens on the breathing. We want to pray there. We want to lift up these needs. We also want to pray for this service tonight, anointing upon Pastor Greg as he ministers God's hand upon those that are going to be launched here tonight, that God is going to go before them and prepare hearts in the cities that are going to be planted in. And as we close in prayer, Pastor William Ortiz from El Alto, Bolivia, is going to come and pray. Hallelujah. Father God, we thank you. Lord, that we have access to your throne of grace. Father God, I'm asking right now that you're going to move in each and every need. Needs of healing right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Miracle power, healing virtue. Father God, we commit this service to you tonight. Let there be a supernatural dimension of the Holy Ghost. Father God, every couple being launched into calling, into destiny, go before them. Father God, we thank you for your grace. Oh, Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus. We're asking you tonight, Father, that you would heal, God, every sickness. God, we bind the spirit of suicide. We rebuke and cast down every strategy that would come against your people. God, we plead the blood right tonight, God, and we're asking for the anointing of the Holy Ghost, God, upon the man of God as he brings forth your word. God, pour out your spirit. Touch this body of people, God. God, and help us to leave this place different in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. You can be seated this evening. We just want to say welcome to our Friday night of our concert, our <laughs> conference. Amen. And uh, it's been an incredible time. Just some announcements, some things to take note of. Uh, first off, our Spanish radios. If you checked out a Spanish interpretation radio, please return it to the Spanish booth immediately after the service. Seat labels for those who have had uh, reserved seat labels. You can leave them on the chairs. Our cleaning crew will pick those up at the conclusion of the conference. Media, please, if you are picking it up, bring your paid receipt, and uh, you can pick up your conference sets at the conclusion of the service. Lost and found can be found at guest services in the main lobby. If you're missing an item, check there and uh, uh, gather your things from there. Online giving, we have our Secure Give app, uh, giving on our website at prescottpottershouse.com, or you can text, and the keyword is CF for Conference Friday, then the amount. If you're writing a check in person here, you can make that out to the Potter's House. 
Uh, for the local uh, congregation, Saturday we will continue our regular one, uh, 180 outreach at 7 p.m. And then in our services on Sunday, we're going to have Pastor Daryl Elliott ministering in the morning and Pastor Juan Pablo Cardo in our evening service. With that, we want to say thank you to our many workers tonight to put on a conference of this magnitude. It is a very big undertaking, and I'm going to go through a list. If you could help me, we'll hold our applause to the end. But we want to say thank you to Bill Bronson and Ed Kidwell and all the delegate planning and accommodation our check-in team that helps us every Monday into Tuesday, Pastor Jonathan Heimberg for the conference printing and putting together the conference video. We want to say thank you to Gary Riley and the tech team, Pastor Stephen Cassio, as he oversees everything you're seeing on the screens, sound, visual, the video and live stream team, our security team led by Brian Renz, our medical team led by Isaac Solano, our refreshment team, led by Steve and Debbie Hernandez. Our sound team, led by Neil Mitchell. Our guest services team, led by Joel and Jeannie Morrison. All of our ushers and those who stay uh, counting, led by Bob and Sharon Allen and those helping them. All of our musicians and platform singers, led by Brian DeBlois. Thank you to our cleaning team, uh, led by Sharon Allen and those that they spend long hours, long after we've left, keeping the facility clean. All of our Spanish interpreters, led by Pastor Diego Galvan, our photographer and video techs. All of our media purchase team, led by Randy Foster and Tina Hessenauer. I want to say thank you to our nursery and child care team, le uh, led by Rachel Keppel and all those who helped our children's church workers led by Mike and Liz DeRoyce. We want to say thank you to our parking lot team led by Pastor Chris Hart and Pete Davis. All of our conference speakers, our morning MCs, we say thank you for getting a hold of the mind of God. Our area police officers that have come, taken time to be with us and help us this week. We want to say thank you to our Prescott staff, Pastor Greg Mitchell, Pastor Diego Galvan, Pastor Cassio, Pastor Chris Hart, and Matt Sanderlin, and many, many others. Amen. Let's tell them thank you tonight. Many, many hands involved in this. And we want to say thank you to all. You have made the investment to join us here this week. Those you've tuned in online, you've helped us pray. You've partnered with us in giving. You've helped us uh, you know, in the safety of coming in and going. And not only that, I'm pleased to announce that uh, among our restaurants, I've gotten great feedback this week from our restaurants. So thank you, conference body. Amen. And we're going to hear reports now, what God is doing throughout our fellowship. Each pastor will tell us their name, their wife's name, where they're pastoring, what God is doing. We're going to hear from Leonard Lopez, Akao Palale, Eric Muyeya, Nando Schweitema, Francis Muntumosi, and Matt Sanger. Let's welcome Leonard Lopez. Hello, my name's Leonard Lopez with my smoking hot wife, Alexis. My kids, Joshua and Leilani, were pioneering in Houston, Texas. When we first got there, the prayer that I had was, you know what, God, give us direction on where you want us to be. God, give us a building that would be a blessing to us, that would be a blessing to my mother church. And God blessed us. Uh, in July, we signed a lease on a beautiful 1,700 square foot building this past July, amen, at our harvesters. God put it, on our, uh, put it on my heart for our church to give an offering. We gave an offering that Monday on my lunch break. I was on offer up. There was a post that same day for church equipment that needed to be out that same week. So I gave them a call. They, they met with me. They ended up getting a great deal. We got 125 brand new chairs, cushioned chairs. We got a couple of soundboards for the church and concert, microphones. 
pretty much everything we needed to get our church up and going for $2,500. So that was a blessing that I link to that offering. Uh, we opened up our church this last November, November 6th. We're still believing God for people to lock in. We've had outreaches, you know, open doors. We've had people saved on our outreach. We've seen heal, uh, healings. We've seen God move supernaturally, uh, healing knees, uh, back, certain, all the, uh, a lot of healing, amen. <laughs> I want to thank God, you know, for this opportunity to pioneer. I want to encourage, you know, if you're fighting God, that you don't want to pioneer, you know what, it's the best decision you ever made. It's a great adventure, amen. You know what? We've heard many times about regrets. You know, don't let this be one of those regrets that you have in your life that, you know, you missed out on the opportunity to see some awesome things God do through your life. I want to thank a lot of people. I want to thank first my pastor, Ben Rodriguez, his wife, Miss Peggy, for their investment into me and my wife. I greatly appreciate it. As many people believe, you know, they have the best pastor. I believe I have the best pastor. I want to thank him. I want to thank our mother church, Northeast San Antonio. I appreciate their investment into me and my wife. I want to thank my parents, Mike and Ali Lopez, for their faithfulness. I want to thank my in-laws, Richie and Rachel Valerio, for their exampleship. I want to thank the McCarthys for going into Santa Fe, New Mexico, and investing their lives into a hard-headed teenager. The Myolos for their investment into my life. I want to thank all my sister churches, you know, all the fellowship churches there in Houston. Pastor Robert Correa for his leadership. Pastor Richard Ruby for his leadership. I want to thank Pastor Jesse and Bethany Morales for their exampleship for me and my wife. We look up to them. I want to thank Pastor Mitchell and Miss Lisa for their leadership. I want to thank the Prescott Church for their faithfulness and their exampleship that we strive to be like. You know, just please keep us in prayer. We're praying for you guys. Thank you. Hello for everyone, my name is Akau Palale. Me and my wife Charlie and our two kids were announced in the first year, uh, winter conference last year uh, to pioneer church in Vitale Samoa. God is moving and has been faithful as we continue to evangelize and win that area for Jesus Christ. In March, Samoa went on full lock, uh, lockdown. We capitalized on social media uh, to do live services and people were faithfully attending uh, these church services. Lockdown came with, own, uh, with its own challenges. Uh, people's uh, uh, finances were affected. It, uh, pay cuts and some uh, lost their jobs but how many of you know that no matter what the devil throw at us we serve a big God can you say amen, amen. people continue to give their tithes and offerings and we saw God's move of uh, favor breakthrough and increases not only on church finances but also on the lives of the faithful saints a lady from the church her four-year-old uh, granddaughter has been experiencing uh, severe pain in her legs especially during the night uh, she would cry herself to sleep or couldn't sleep at all uh, because of, uh, because of the pain, we lay hands on her, we pick in that devour, and God healed her. The pain left and never came back. In July, Pastor Kurt did a revival for us. People came and heard a powerful message. We saw people getting saved, backsliders recommitting their lives, and people getting healed and delivered by the power of the gospel. There's a couple in the church for more than 30 years. Uh, they lived with their children in a small house, a uh, shack of about uh, 300 square uh, foot or less, with no windows, uh, very open. Uh, uh, the, the roof is damaged and also very vulnerable to floods uh, during the rainy season. Despite the condition of her home, uh, she always opened her house to host uh, Bible studies and outdoor uh, church programs. This family earned a very uh, low income throughout the year, but they are very faithful in their giving to the church. One day, the mother came up to me and said, Pastor, we're going to believe God for a bigger house for my family. We contend it through prayers and fasting. God break through and bless them financially. Just before Christmas, they completed uh, building a solid two-bedroom uh, brick house of about 650 square feet. Uh, I don't know about that in meters, you do the maps. Uh, brick by brick, inch by inch, little by little, they were able to build a house without, and I say without, capital letter, bold underline, without having to loan or borrow money from the bank. And all the glory goes back to God for what he's doing for Vitelli. And I would like to acknowledge our leaders, Pastor Gray and Sister Lisa, the Prescott Church, thank you for your investment in the Pacific. Pastor Rios, Pastor Ballinger, and Pastor Girl, thank you for your leaders, for your leadership and guidance. To our, our saints in Vitelli, thank you for your commitment. Uh, to my lovely wife, thank you for your prayers and support. And lastly, please pray for us as we continue to pray for you. Thank you. Amen. Praise God. My name is Eric Noamuyeya. I and my wife Clementina 
We took over the church there in Okuru, Kenya, some 20, 22 years ago from Pastor John McCarthy. And uh, God has been helping us all that time. Sometimes back a few years ago, McCarthy had a friend there in Okuru years ago, a, a, a missionary from just some other uh, place where they were friends. Uh, he would come to church. And uh, a few years after we took over, uh, Pastor McCarthy came to pray for us. And uh, he, he spoke to Pastor McCarthy and said, how, how do you train these guys? Because uh, after you've left, I've watched your guy uh, three, four years, uh, and he does exactly the same thing that you are doing over the years. Uh, and my pastor told him that is what is called a discipleship. Uh, and so we thank God for that. Just a few highlights um, uh, over the year. Uh, we lost some people d during the COVID season, not as in dying. Nobody died, but um, a few people stopped coming to church uh, they, as soon as they heard about that. Uh, but uh, um, uh, when the churches were allowed to open again, uh, uh, people came back, not all of them. Uh, I, I had to use a, a, a little threat here and there to cause some of them to come back. Uh, because I told them, if you're afraid of us, that you're afraid of coming to church because we might infect you, then God forbid, if you get sick, we are not coming over there. We will pray for you over the phone. We will believe for you, but we are not coming there. And a good number came back to church. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Amen. Uh, we are going on well with evangelism, uh, the way we've, been, we've always known how to do over the years. Um, and this last year, we've had record numbers of people getting saved, um, 40, 50 people uh, getting saved, which has not been happening in the, time, in the years before. And we thank God so much for that. Um, uh, we came up with a strategy. I noticed that uh, in the, in the uh, residential areas around the church, there are numbers of people that don't go to church, but then they get sick, then they lose loved, loved ones, um, and there is nobody to help them. And many churches say, if you do, are not a part of our church, will not help you. We decided to come up with a ministry called Ministry uh, to the Community. And we would go help those people. And a lot of people have really, really appreciated that. Uh, it's brought many people to church. Uh, they have come in. They have uh, been established. Uh, simply because we showed them kindness uh, and we showed them um, goodness. Hallelujah. Okay. Uh, we thank God. We had some uh, um, baptisms. Uh, this last year, uh, twice, uh, we had uh, baptism services, uh, and many people came out to that. Uh, and then this last October, we had uh, our conference there in Nairobi, and we were able to plant our seventh church, uh, and we thank God for that. Uh, God bless you for our Pastor John McCarthy, Pastor Tom Payne, Pastor Greg Michela. God bless you so much. Amen. Amen. My name is Nomdo Schuitema. The name of my beautiful wife is Karine. We're pastoring in Zwolle in Holland. We, um, we're having a great time in Holland. Uh, I want to mention a uh, number of years ago, many years ago, actually, Teal Osborne. He came first time to Holland and he held a healing crusade there in The Hague on the Mali Veld. Uh, that was uh, something extraordinary, never something to be seen before in Holland. More than 100,000 visitors came out, and uh, the Dutch Reformed, were, uh, Dutch Reformed churches were very upset, totally not amused, but it was a breakthrough in the, in the, in the, in the Christian life in, uh, in Holland. Um, it was called the Holland Wonder, and Pastor Mitchell read about that. He had a vision for Holland. Uh, because of that vision, we now have 63 churches in Holland. <laughs> Practically every major city in Holland that is 80,000 above has one of our churches. We're now going in the smaller churches, in the smaller cities, I mean, and uh, we're amazed at the fruitfulness that we also see there. Last summer, Pastor Greg came to exactly the same field uh, in The Hague, uh, on the Mali Veld, had three nights of a healing crusade. In the evenings, we saw uh, 80 people getting saved. Many more people came to visit. We had notable miracles. The last evening, we had 1,100 people in attendance in the tent. In our conference, we had Pastor Lamb and Pastor Greg. We launched out our first couple in uh, Guadeloupe. It's a French Caribbean island. It's a new nation in our fellowship. Very grateful and excited about that. It's the third uh, French-speaking nation we're going into, and they started their first service past Sunday. 
we had uh, student year coming to Zwolle, and uh, our youth welcomed them last year with many concerts, sports activities. At the end of October, our youth and old were involved in an escape room for, from hell. Uh, there were actually four rooms, there were visitors, there were visitors from farm boys to students from Vietnam and Korea. Our people worked in shifts until three o'clock in the morning while the demons were having their coffee break. The visitors were preached to in the last room and uh, it was a great scene. We have uh, 12 home Bible study groups, many more than ever. We have young people, older people involved in that. It's getting a lot of traction. People are enthusiastic about it. We see people coming back, young people, older people. Uh, we saw somebody drifting in South America, wanted to come back to Zwolle. He called, I said, come. Uh, he was back within a few days. I want to thank the Prescott Church, Pastor Greg, bless you. My name is Francis, uh, my wife um, Paul and our son Nathan. We are pastoring in Pretoria in Sunnyside in South Africa. And so uh, this church was pioneered by Mike and Terry Sawyer. Uh, and so I got saved there 16 years ago uh, under their ministry. So I want to give you a victory report. 2022 was a very fruitful year. We've had a number of new converts that came in locked in our church, and so many of them were baptized and now involved in various ministries. And so one of the highlights of that year, we begin to see uh, people in our church operating in the gifts of the spirits, particularly in the uh, gifts of prophecy, interpretation of tongue, and so tongues. And uh, that had changed the atmosphere in our congregation. It was almost like the spirit of heaviness was lifted, and so we're so grateful for what God is doing. We had two revivals, Evangelist Patrick Saris from Holland, Steve Nicodemus from Prescott. They brought encouragement um, and a level of ministry that uh, leveled the ground for us um, and left a blessing that we can keep um, uh, functioning under. And so uh, I want to thank them for their ministries. A couple of highlights. Um, uh, last year, we've had um, uh, 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 a Bible conference in September. We took a number of converts, as we usually do. And one night, Pastor Greg was preaching. He prayed for people that were allergic to certain foods and challenged them to come to pray and to go back and test them. One of the ladies that uh, came to our, our conference for the first time, she's a convert. She prayed a prayer. She was allergic to dairy products. She can't eat cheese, no ice cream, uh, uh, no yogurt, no milk. But that night, she went home. She prayed. Prayed, um, and when she went home, she tested, um, and she was powerfully healed. This past Wednesday, just to make double sure that she's still healed, she texted me to say she's 100% healed, um, God touched her life, um, and she's actually now enjoying ice cream. Uh, what is a blessing for her. Amen. Thank God. Praise God. Same Bible conference, we planted our, our second baby church down uh, in Pretoria North, uh, a key couple. We released them into the ministry. They're having great revival, open about four weeks, um, and God is really helping them. I want to say thank you to a few people, Pastor uh, uh, Mike and Terry Sawyer. I want to thank them for investment in Pretoria. I want to thank our local leadership, Pastor Jonathan Heimberg, for wisdom and guidance. I want to thank Pastor Greg, Pastor Mark Olson, for the investment in Pretoria. Without your investment, I wouldn't be standing here tonight. It's a miracle of God. Um, I want to thank for my, uh, my wife for faithfulness over the years. Um, and specifically, I want to thank the Sunnyside congregation. If you're watching online, God bless you for faithfulness over the years. Pray for us as we pray for you. God bless you. Amen. Hello, my name is Matt Sanger. My beautiful wife, Chrissy, and two of our three children were launched out of the January 2021 Prescott Conference into Fort Myers, Florida. This last September, we had evangelist Micah Wright come in and do a revival for us. Throughout the week, he preached encouraging sermons, gave timely words to everybody that came out. A few notable miracles. There was a young man that came in. He got saved that very first night he was there. He had pain in his back. Pastor Wright prayed for him. Uh, he was completely healed, was able to move around freely. And just to prove it, he was doing handstands in front of the church before the night was over. Uh, another couple came in uh, a few nights later. Uh, they got saved. Uh, Pastor Wright prayed for both of them as well. They were both healed of back and neck pain. 
At the end of September, our city was uh, hit by Hurricane Ian, and our church building was flooded. Because of the flooding, uh, our building had to be completely remodeled. Uh, we had to do something. We pivoted. We found a hotel conference room to meet in, and God really helped us there. Uh, over the past three months, we've had visitors to just about every one of our services in the hotel. Before service, we go out into the lobby, we go out into the parking lot, we take flyers, we invite people to come join with us in those services. After we're done with service, we go back out to the parking lot, we find people out that are out there milling around. We've been able to pray for people uh, to get healed, to get saved out in the parking lot of that hotel as well. Uh, we, we also have seen God do just a supernatural work for us in a number of different things. Finances uh, was one of them. While we were there in the hotel, there was a, a construction man. He was a manager. Uh, he was there to do a rebuilding of the community. Uh, as he was walking through the lobby, he heard our song service. Uh, he came in. He sat down, uh, got up right at the altar call and left. And I thought, well, you know, maybe missed opportunity. Uh, a little bit later, as we were cleaning up, he came back in. He handed me a check for $200. He said, hey, I believe in what you guys are doing. Keep it up. Uh, I hope this will help support what God's doing here. Another time, uh, we were showing a movie outreach in the hotel. Uh, the hotel staff all showed up for the movie. Uh, we had uh, people that were in the, the hotel come in as well. About halfway through the movie, a couple of the guys in the church, they came over to me and said, hey, pastor, that guy's over there drinking some Corona beer. And I said, hey, uh, we're on their turf. This is just like a park outreach. Uh, he's not making any problems. Just leave him there. Let's see what God will do. Before the end of the movie was over, uh, he had finished off his beer, and he was just hanging out. At the end, uh, preached the altar call. He came up. He gave his life to Jesus Christ. Uh, he started coming to church, uh, and uh, through a, a course of events, uh, he ended up, uh, we prayed for him. He was healed from back problems, uh, and he kept coming out with us. Uh, throughout our time in the hotel, we saw just over 20 people saved uh, with uh, five uh, people healed. I want to thank uh, Pastor Brad Plyman and the Prembook Pines Church for helping us with fuel cans and generators right after the, the hurricane. I want to thank Pastor Greg and Lisa Mitchell, Pastor Jesse and Beth for guidance and the opportunity to be there. Thank you for the Prescott Church. God bless you all. Amen. I have the uh, honor and the privilege of receiving a miracle offering tonight. That's what I believe this is going to be. I want to just mention, first of all, that the offering tonight is not last night's pledge. If you have a pledge from last night that you plan on putting in the offering, thank you for that, uh, your faith in giving that pledge designated for world evangelism. But this is a separate offering that requires a different response. We also want to uh, encourage our uh, vast online audience to participate uh, in the offering. We depend upon you. There are people tuning in from all over the world that are participating in our conference this evening. How valuable is this to you tonight? How valuable? Every time I come to conference, it never ceases to birth in me a greater measure of appreciation and gratitude for what we have. Our relationship with Christ is first and foremost, but the fellowship that has been produced under the vision of Pastor Mitchell is a miracle to behold. It's a model for all the world to see, and this fellowship, as others have mentioned, uh, this week uh, is making history uh, all over the world. We're going to come out of the conference tonight. Uh, new laborers and workers are going to go to the four corners of the world to make history. We are a people that are blessed beyond what we deserve. Amen. We haven't earned this, but God treats us as honored sons uh, and honored daughters. God is a God of miracles. How many believe that? We want miracles. We need miracles. Whether they're miracles of healing or they are miracles of finance or relational healing, we want miracles. But I want you to consider tonight being a miracle, or maybe better said, 
God using you to produce a miracle because I believe we're going to have a supernatural miracle offering tonight uh, that is going to go way beyond what's ever happened in this conference before. And the response tonight uh, is going to be noted by God and there's going to be a dimension operative in the spiritual realm all around the world as a consequence of how you respond to being a miracle tonight. There's a lot of talk about influencers today. Influencers. I want to talk about two major influencers today, and they are spiritual influencers. And one of those two influencers is going to drive what you do in this offering. The first one is represented by this man, John G. Wendell. John G. Wendell. John G. Wendell never thought about what his wealth could do for others. He never gave it a single thought. He only ever thought of himself. When he died, he left no will. He could have cared less what happened to his money after he was gone. His father, John D. Wendell, died in 1856 and left a fortune of $3 million to his son. That was $3 million in 1856 money, so several hundred million dollars to his son, John, and six sisters. John G. Wendell lived a very strange life. He was a recluse. He, refer, he was referred to as a hermit, rarely left his home. He and his sisters remained in the four-story man, uh, four mansion on Fifth Avenue and 39th Street in New York City for the rest of their lives. John never allowed his sisters to marry for fear of diminishing his fortune. They all wore old clothes. They never bought new. They never bought a car when they became available. They never had their house uh, wired for electricity or installed phones. Uh, and in the early uh, 20th century, there were 10 million phones in America. He wouldn't pay the money to have them installed. During his life, he amassed over 150 properties worth uh, $100 million, $2.7 billion in today's money. He died in 1914. The last sister pictured here died in 1931, trapped in a prison of one man's covetousness. He left no heirs, no will. His fortune was distributed by the court to several charities. And one man commented on this and said, they drew less pleasure and enjoyment from their fortune than a bricklayer gets out of his weekly wage. Ultimately, you have control tonight over your assets, your wealth, and your money. You can do this. How much of the money that you have available to give are you going to actually release into this offering for the benefit of this conference, for the benefit of covering the well over half a million dollar expense of this conference. And how much of what you're going to give tonight is actually going to be a sacrifice. That's really the issue at hand for each one of us. And people deal with that issue differently and so will you tonight. The above illustration is what we are when we withhold from God and while I hope there are no John G. Wendells here tonight. Imagine pulling an offering with this guy in the audience. But the spirit that bound him for his entire life is here. And the objective of that spirit of covetousness and withholding uh, is to influence you tonight. It's an influencer. There's vast wealth represented here. There's a miracle here. A mind-boggling miracle of finance is represented by all of you that are here tonight. Mark 12 is my text. The widow with two mites who achieved more in this moment 
When Jesus saw her give in the temple, she achieved more in that moment than John G. Wendell did his entire life. Mark 12, let me read it. Now Jesus sat opposite the treasury and saw, he's watching tonight, he's watching you and all of you over here and you. He's watching. Now Jesus sat opposite the treasury and saw how people put money into the treasury. You see, there's a how that has to do with your offering tonight. And many who were rich put in much. Then one poor widow came and threw in two mites, uh, which make a quadrant. Uh, and so Jesus called his disciples. And I can see him. They apparently had scattered around the temple. They're wandering around. He's getting their attention. Come, 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 come. I want you to see this. Jesus called his disciples and said to them, Assuredly, and I know that he said this with emphasis and with emotion and with impact, Assuredly, I say to you, this poor widow has put in more than all those who have given into the treasury, for they put in out of their abundance. But she, out of her poverty, put in all, all that she had, her whole livelihood. Jesus is moved by this. He is impressed by this. She accomplished more with her little than John Wendell did with his billions. So it's a question for you to consider tonight. How much of what we have available to give are we going to release into this offering? You see, covetousness, we can call it the spirit of withholding, is a spirit that strives to interfere with every offering and with what we need to do tonight. We've got to get it out of the way if we're going to have a miracle offering tonight. Could that spirit be here tonight, even trying to influence you this evening. This is one of the influencers that I spoke of. What if, I thought about this today, what if this widow woman had given one of her coins, half of all she had? That would have been an incredible offering. Have you ever given half of all you have? But if she had done that, would Jesus have been impressed would he have made this show and this scene? I kind of think not, because what this woman did was so extraordinary, he had to call his disciples together. Giving one of the two coins uh, wouldn't have had that same impact, I don't believe. She gave her whole livelihood. It means she trusted God to provide. You know, not everybody gets miracles, because they don't do what it takes to Receive a miracle. Before you can receive a miracle, it's a good idea to be a miracle. This nameless widow lived in a supernatural dimension that I want to live in. Think about what the rhythm of her life must have been. If she's willing to put in all of her livelihood, that means she trusts God. That means that when she steps out of the temple and goes back into the affairs of her life, somehow, some way, provision is going to be made for her. And that's the rhythm of her life. A rhythm of receiving from God, acknowledging Him, and then taking that offering to the temple. You have to decide if that's where you want to live tonight. Remember Ananias and Sapphira? Now a man named Ananias with his wife Sapphira sold a piece of property with his wife's full knowledge and complicity and kept back and kept some. They gave, but the influencer of covetousness was there and that spirit, that spirit influenced them to withhold and keep back part. That's why my question, and I repeat it for the third time, how much of what you have available to give will you release tonight? And how much of how much of tonight is going to be influenced either by the spirit of withholding that convinces you to hold back some, 
or a spirit of liberality and faith, and faith, which is what had laid hold of this woman's life. You see, both of these individuals are bound. John G. Wendell is bound, but so is the woman by a spirit of generosity and gratitude and liberality and love for Jesus. This spirit shows up at every offering. It's as faithful as the most faithful disciple in the church. And the objective is to influence the offering the Holy Spirit is also here tonight. To speak to your heart. To trigger faith. Faith. To challenge you to be an instrument for a miracle tonight. A miracle offering is going to be poured into the offering plates tonight from all over the world. All over the world. Satan, he's here so I can talk to him. You're not going to have influence. Going to have influence over this offering. People here are not going to listen to you. They're going to listen to the Holy Spirit, uh, and they're going to give by faith, uh, following the example uh, of this uh, miracle widow woman uh, who's noted for all of eternity. Uh, we're going to get to meet her, interact with her, find out how she went about living her life when we all get to heaven. Uh, but for now, the Holy Spirit is using her testimony as an influencer for this offering tonight. I cast out every spirit that had John G. Wendell captivated for a lifetime. In Jesus' name. I want you to bow your heads as the ushers come. A lot of talk about influencers today. That's what the Holy Spirit is. Will you let pastor the Holy Spirit influence you to go way above and beyond what you considered giving? He'll seek to do that tonight. He has all the money in the world. He owns the cattle on a thousand hills. Money is not a problem for God. It's a problem for us uh, when we allow the influencer of covetousness or withholding uh, to be what determines what we do. Don't listen to that voice tonight. Listen to the same voice that this widow woman listened to. She listened to the influencer of the Holy Spirit and had no problem giving all that she had. She lived in a rhythm of trust and receiving from God and giving, and we can do the same tonight, and you can do the same tonight. And that may mean, Pastor, you can give the largest offering you have ever given. There's somebody listening online, many people listening online. You're going to give the largest offering tonight you've ever given by faith because you're listening to the influencer of the Holy Spirit. And if you're here, you're struggling with what to give, it's because uh, you're allowing that voice of covetousness to try it and break through. Don't listen. Don't let that happen, please. We're on the threshold of the most incredible miracle season of revival in our fellowship over the next six months. Under the leadership of Pastor Greg and many of our leaders all around the world, our fellowship is poised to, to grow exponentially in the next season of six months and a year. And a lot of that has to do with what you do tonight in this offering. Father, we thank you that we can be a miracle tonight. We can be the instrument of a miracle that produces wealth and resources to meet every need and beyond. And Lord, a miracle of such a degree that it gets the attention of the power of God that is then going to move in a dimension beyond what we have ever known in Jesus' name. Pastor, you want miracle ministry, miracle disciples, uh, miracle growth and enlargement. Uh, listen to the influencer uh, of the Holy Spirit. Uh, we're going to have a miracle offering tonight, uh, and you are the instrument. Uh, let's give tonight. Uh, in Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Let's give and worship the
fantastic conference we've had and uh, God is going to help us tonight. I just want to thank all of you that uh, have chosen to come be with us. Those of you in your giving, I believe that that your giving is going to trigger miracles in your own life and is going to be used for miracles in the next six months. God's going to help us. Thank God. Turn in your Bibles to the book of Jeremiah Chapter 1, in 2010, residents in a small town in the Australian outback, they were shocked when fish began falling from the sky. They said hundreds of fish fell from the sky all over the place. They were alive when they hit the ground. Locals went around picking them up. Meteorologists say the incident was probably caused by a tornado that sucked up water and fish from rivers and dropped them alive hundreds of miles away. Think about this. Fishermen love to catch fish, but what if that could suddenly occur? I know there are fishermen here, you're like, I was out there all day, didn't catch a thing, but that's okay. Not me. <laughs> what if in a moment what you've been longing for, God was able to do. The text we're going to read, I'm reading from the King James very deliberately. I don't usually read King James, but there's a word here that we're going to examine. It speaks of a hastening, or literally a speeding up. We're going to talk about it. When I read the Bible, I just want to tell you before I get into the sermon, in my Bible reading, sometimes I am merely feeding my soul. I'm not trying to get anything for anybody else. It is simply connecting with God. Sometimes when I read, God is speaking to me about sermons that I will preach to others. But sometimes, and this is what happened with this text, a couple of months ago, God quickens something in my spirit that is prophetic. Meaning God is telling me of something that is coming, something that he wants to do. And that, I want you to listen to me. I'm going to preach something. I believe God is showing me that he wants to do in every person, in every church, in our fellowship that has to do with a hastening work. And I want to preach about the hastening. Two verses of, of scripture. Jeremiah 1, 11 and 12, Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Jeremiah, what seest thou? And I said, I see a rod of an almond tree. And the Lord said to me, You have well seen, for I will hasten my word to perform it. The hastening. Let's begin. Let's talk about the promises. You need to understand the background of the text here. This comes out of the life and the ministry of Jeremiah, who is called the weeping prophet. Jeremiah was called to ministry 
In a time of decline and tragedy in his nation, he saw the downward spiral of his nation. He saw the destruction of Jerusalem and the temple. He saw his people go into captivity in a foreign land. And God understood the effect that these negative events would have on Jeremiah's heart. Proverbs 13, 12. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. That word sick has the idea of weakness, being unable to continue. You see, sometimes it seems like God is doing nothing. God makes many promises, but let's be honest, at times it seems like God's word is not being fulfilled. Psalm 13, 1, how long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? And our problem is we measure by externals, by what we can see, and often what you can see, it appears as though nothing is changing, nothing is happening. Jesus cursed the fig tree in the Gospels. And all the disciples, apparently, they looked at the tree to see what would happen. But it, on the outside, it appeared nothing is changing. That's why they were shocked the next day when the tree truly was dried up and dead. When nothing seems to be happening, some people, they stop believing altogether. 2 Kings 7, 1 and 2, Elisha said, Hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord, This time, tomorrow, a sea of fine flour will be sold for a shekel, two seahs of barley for a shekel, at the gate of Samaria. But an officer on whose hand the king leaned answered the man of God and said, Look, if the Lord could make windows in heaven, could this thing be? And Elisha said, You shall see it with your eyes, but you will not eat of it. Here's a man who had been beaten down by the struggle of, to survive, and he comes to the conclusion it can't happen. Some people move away from God's promises in disobedience. Abraham and Sarah doubted that God would ever fulfill his promise of a child. So they said, let's make our own plans to try to help fulfill the promise. David said, one day I shall perish at the hand of Saul. And so his answer, he moved away from God's promise. This is what some people do. Let's do something else in life because obviously God is not going to do what he said. But for others, it just seems like the process of God working his will takes so much time. And this is Time is the normal process of life. Things take time to work out. Mark 9, 28, the New Living Translation. First, a leaf blade pushes through. Then the heads of wheat are formed. And finally, the grain ripens. A process. Everything good in life, I understand this. There is a process, process that involves time. It takes patience. You can't hurry growth. You can't hurry revelation. You can't move people beyond their level of revelation. Matthew 16, 17, Jesus answered and said, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. In other words, Jesus is saying, I have 12 disciples, Bartholomew and Matthew, they don't get it yet. That's okay. There's a process. We can't rush people beyond their revelation. That is true. And if you ignore the truth of process, you're going to be frustrated and do damage even. I had a young pastor. He started with a bang, getting a good crowd of people, and then all of them were gone. And I asked him, what happened? And he said, I gave them too much too fast and he wound up losing them all because he ignored the process of time that it takes so that is true but listen to me 
The problem is, we can get to a point where we assume the only way God can work is slowly. In our mind, we're, I'm going to believe God, but it's going to be a long process. You can't expect much to happen. There are people that are laboring for the Lord, and they are convinced we are here to plow. We're just breaking up hard ground. Others, we plant seed, and we have to wait and wait and wait for it to take root and bear fruit. Yes, I want people to be saved, but God is going to have to slowly break down resistance in people. He's going to have to slowly change circumstances so that people will respond. There are people here, there are pastors, you have seen over time the slowness that it takes with people in Revelation, and now you think that's the way it is always going to be. It's going to take a long time. You're going to pray and pray and pray. You're going to witness and witness and witness, no response. Then you're going to get people saved and they won't come back and that somehow has become normal. And it, Then they're coming but they're, they're not really getting it and you have grown accustomed to the fact it's going to take a long time for them to decide to lock in and leave their sin and become faithful and give money and witness to people. In 2004, I went to the nation of Turkey to spy out the land. At that time, I thought perhaps God wanted me to go. I went to a number of cities in Turkey. One of those is um, Ankara in Turkey. In Ankara has a Christian radio station, the only Christian radio station in the entire nation. And I was trying to meet Christians and ask questions, find out what things were like in Turkey. I met the owner of a Christian radio station in a Muslim nation, a good man, I believe he was an Armenian Christian. He had a good heart. He wanted his nation to be touched by God. I simply began to exp uh, explain the, the vision of our fellowship. And I said, we know we'll come in like uh, evangelize. Like, and he said, what does that mean? I, well, we'd set up like maybe a concert and, and use music to draw people. Then we'd preach to them and pull an altar call. And he looked at me in shock. He said, you just say it? And I said, what do you mean? And he said, you just tell them the gospel and then ask them to pray? And I said, yeah. <laughs> Listen, at a Christian radio station, all of the employees, the DJs playing Christian music were not Christian, they were Muslim. They had worked for a Christian radio station for years and had never been saved, partly because the owner didn't expect them to. He thought it would take a long, long time for them ever to make a decision. But the problem is we can be very much like my friend in a Muslim country. We can assume that in our city the only way that God is ever going to work is very slowly. Let's talk about the hastening then. Our text speaks about the, God's faithfulness to fulfill his promises. What do you see? He says, I see an almond tree. In Hebrew, the word almond is actually the word wakeful or to waken up. And the idea of the almond tree being wakeful is that apparently while other trees are still asleep and hibernating in the winter, the almond tree is the first to wake up, blossom, and bear fruit. So God is telling a discouraged man of God, he is telling him first of all, God never forgets a promise. Verse 12, then the Lord said to me, you have well seen, for I will hasten my word to perform it. 
Deuteronomy 7, 9, Therefore know the Lord your God. He is God, the faithful God, who keeps covenant and mercy for a thousand generations with those who love him and keep his commandments. Numbers 23, 19, God is not a man. He is not a human being. He will not lie. He does not change his mind. What he says he will do, he does. What he promises, he makes come true. So he is telling Jeremiah, I want you to know when I promise something, I keep my word. But this is what I want to emphasize. It's more than just I keep my word slowly or I keep my word gradually or I keep my word eventually. God says I can hasten my promises. The word hasten is to watch or be ready because it's about to happen. It has the idea of hurry or speed, which is why the King James interpreters, they put the word hasten, which we understand has the idea of hurrying. God is telling us, I'm not limited by time. I'm not limited by circumstances. Jeremiah 32, 17, O sovereign Lord, you made the heavens and earth by your strong hand and powerful arm. Nothing is too hard for you. Jeremiah is getting a revelation, God, if you made everything in this world by speaking, nothing can stop you. Listen to me tonight. Do you think God is sweating Satanists and witchcraft? Do you think he is really bothered or worried how he can possibly work with politicians and laws as they are, economies and inflation, religion and sin? Absolutely not. And our text says God is able to speed up the fulfillment of his promises. Verse 12, I will hasten, I will hurry my word to perform it. Listen, God can step in and cause to happen quickly what normally takes a lot of time. This is the famous picture of the almond budding in Numbers 17, 8. It came to pass the next day. Moses went into the tabernacle of witness, and behold, the rod of Aaron, the house of Levi, had sprouted, put forth buds, blossoms, and yielded ripe almonds, and that was overnight. In a night, God did what normally should take months or years. And so connected to the almond is this idea. God said, I can speed up the process of fulfilling my promises. See, hastening is a promise that God makes in, in the Bible. Psalm 147, verse 15, he sends out his command to the earth. His word runs very swiftly. This hastening is pictured in the, pro, uh, in the prophets. Ezekiel 37, 7. I prophesied as I co was commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a noise, and suddenly a rattling, and the bones came together bone to bone. Suddenly. This hastening is what God did in the rebirth of the nation of Israel. Isaiah 66, 8, no one ever heard of this happening. No one's ever seen it happen. In the same day, no one ever saw a country begin in one day. No one's ever heard of a new nation beginning in one moment. But Jerusalem will give birth to her children just as soon as she feels the birth pains. That is prophesied thousands of years ago, and it was fulfilled exactly as God who ever heard of a nation in one day suddenly being a nation 1948 that is exactly what happened God said I speeded up the process in a day suddenly Israel was a nation hastening is a mark of the work of the Holy Spirit Acts 2 2 and suddenly 
There came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. It filled the house, the whole house where they were sitting. Did you catch that when the Holy Spirit comes? It didn't say gradually. It didn't say slowly. It didn't say someday or eventually. I like this. It said suddenly. Excuse me while I be Pentecostal for a moment. Suddenly. Oh, I like that word. In a moment of time, the church was birthed by the power of the Holy Spirit. Suddenly, that is a hastening work. And hastening is seen in God's miraculous works. Elijah outran Ahab's chariot from Mount Carmel to Samaria. The disciples are in a storm in the boat in John 6, 21. They took him into the boat and immediately the boat reached the shore where they were heading. Philip is in the desert and the Spirit catches him up and the Bible says suddenly he was at a city called Azotus. Can I tell you something? God can speed up the process of salvation. Acts 9, 3, as he journeyed, it came near Damascus. Suddenly, a light shone around him from heaven. In a moment of time, God arrested Saul uh, and, uh, uh, and did a miracle in his heart. Listen, God can in a moment change hearts and lives. There are people here, you are tormented because you've had family members, uh, you've had friends, you've had people in the community say, never Never, I will never get saved. Oh, listen, but God can suddenly shine light from heaven. Listen, oh, yes, he can. That is how I got saved. I had exasperated my parents in my teenage rebellion until they were thinking, how can we bury the body? I woke up one morning in sin and rebellion with zero thought of salvation. It wasn't like I was thinking about it. Maybe I'm gradually getting, I had no intention when I woke up that morning of getting saved. But by that night, suddenly light shone in my heart. Yes. God can speed up the process of salvation in building a church. Peter preaches one altar call. 3,000 get saved and a church, a fully functioning church was birthed suddenly. God can speed up the process of provision. Listen, God could help you gradually over time. I know that. Gradually pay off your bills, gradually amass, and wealth gain slowly over time. I understand that part of the Bible. But I also understand God can suddenly blow in the wind and cause quail to be provided. I understand that suddenly in one night, God caused all of the Egyptians to willingly give their money to God's people. Lisa and I, we experienced in just a small measure that hastening work of God when we went to Johannesburg, South Africa. We labored in frustration for a few months, was not going well. We were meeting some people from an area called El Dorado Park, and too long of a story, but Stacy Diller was supposed to preach in Pretoria and got canceled at the last minute. Things were not going well where we were, and I said, well, he's gonna be here. Let's just try a tent meeting. I'm trying to get permission. We got permission. I'm, I'm scrambling because this wasn't planned. We got some flyers and posters printed the day of the, I picked him up. We were supposed to have a meeting that night. This is totally unadvertised. We put out maybe 40, 50 flyers and 10 to 20 posters maximum. But that night, 65 people came out and 35 of them got saved. The next night, 165 people came out and 70 or 80 got saved. The third night, 225 people came out. We went for three weeks in December until Christmas, broke until the 1st of January, and then we had revival for another four weeks. 
at the end of seven weeks, we had a fully functioning church. Thank God. Because God is able to hasten his word. I close one more thought. Let's talk about seeing the hastening. In our text, God says, the key to hastening, if God wants to hurry his word, what is it that triggers that hastening? And the Bible says it's vision. Verse 11, Jeremiah what seest thou in the King James? What do you see? Can you see with the eyes of faith? For some of you, maybe that is in spite of apparently nothing happening. In spite of the fact that it's been a slow process or a slow work up to now. You know what faith is? Faith is a stubborn thing. Romans 4, 20 and 21, he never doubted that God would keep his promise. He never stopped believing. He grew stronger in faith and gave praise to God. Abraham felt sure that God was able to do what he had promised. Hebrews 10, 23, let us hold firmly to the hope we've confessed because we can trust God to do what he's promised. It was Winston Churchill who said the nose of the bulldog has been slanted backwards so he can breathe without letting go. Faith is like that. Faith is not me hyping you. How many of you believe Jesus? Yes! And then you get home and go, oh man, it's hard. That's not faith. Faith sometimes is a stubborn thing. I will in God's word is true. But my challenge, I felt quickened in my Bible reading. This scripture leapt out at me more than usual. And I believe this is what God is saying. He wants to do in our fellowship in the next six months. In the next year, God wants to do a hastening work. Listen, if Jesus is coming back, don't, isn't that what we need to happen? Don't we, listen, read in the book of Acts. You see there, they had incredible revival. They plant churches and guys who become pastors and apparently it, not all of those were three years because God hastened. If Jesus is coming back, we desperately need a hastening work. We need churches to be planted. I am believing that some of these that are going to be planted tonight, it is not going to be a long, slow process. Some of them, God could hasten his word. Thank God. Can you believe for a hastening work? in salvation of the people you love, in spite of what the outside look. Can you believe that they can wake up one morning and light can shine from heaven? Can you believe that in your church, I don't care how long it's been the same deadly dozen, that in a moment God could intervene and hasten the work of salvation? Amen. And can you Pray for a hastening work. Maybe some of you need to change your prayer. Some of you come into prayer like, okay, God, do your work. But in your mind, that's that slow, grinding work. Maybe it is that God is saying, I want to bring a hastening work. Pray it in. I close with this story, if you'll bear with me for a moment. 1966, a man named Erlo Stegen. He had a congregation of 40 people in the town of Mafamolo in KwaZulu-Natal in South Africa. He and the church were depressed over the lack of power in their church, so they started having meetings in a cow shed. In one service, the Spirit of God came. They said they felt a rushing mighty wind blow on each of them. A great awareness of sin came over them as they prayed. Christians were overcome with deep conviction of sin. This led them to confession, repentance, asking for forgiveness, forgiving other people. But God began to draw sinners supernaturally to the church. The first was a witch. She suddenly showed up. 
She was saved and delivered from demons. Then witch doctors started coming and getting saved and delivered. People in the area were overwhelmed with the conviction of sin. They were desperate to be freed uh, from the burden of their sins. As if led by some mysterious hand, people began streaming to the church. Erlo said, we asked every one of them, who brought you here? Their answer was nobody. How did you know we were here? Who invited you? Nobody. Over and over again, we got the same answers. We can't explain it, but it must have been God. A power within us has driven us to come here. We can't sleep. We can't get peace of mind. All we can see are our sins. Hundreds of people began flocking to the church. Christians would step out the front door of the church building any time of the day, any day of the week, and there'd be one to 200 people standing outside. Hardened sinners would be weeping like little children children. What's the matter, they'd ask them. We are sinners. God kindled his fire and it spread through the area so that thousands were saved in one week. Healings began to take place spontaneously without being prayed for. Simply by being in the services and hearing the word of God preached, it brought physical healing. News of the healing spread like wildfire throughout the region. For a few days, it was as if the very air was charged with the presence of God. People would come to Mafamolo and immediately be convicted of their sins just by encountering the presence of God. Uh, uh, whole areas of the countryside were then open to the gospel with invitations for teams to come and minister in surrounding villages. As ministry teams began visiting other areas, the same occurrences Took, that took place in Mafamolo were repeated over and over again. Listen to this. Erlo Stegen said, the Lord accomplished more in three days than he had witnessed in 12 years of ministry. A hastening work. Oh, can you give the Lord praise? Oh, God, I believe that you are able, Lord God, to you are the God of hastening, Lord God. You are able to hasten your word. Oh, God, I am looking forward to what you are going to do. Oh, God, nothing is too hard for you. You are a faithful God, and you can hasten your word to perform it. Let's bow our heads all across this place. My challenge right now, there are people that you are not right with God. And I am giving you a challenge from God to turn from your sin. Some of you, this is your desperate need. You go to church, but you're not right with God. Some of you wandered in or you were invited to come. And tonight, if you would be honest, you said God would not be pleased with the way that I'm living. But I give you hope in Jesus Christ. Jesus died on the cross to pay for your sin. And if you're here tonight and you're not right with God, we're going to do other things in the service. But I want to give an opportunity, every person here, if you are not right with God, you want to pray and turn from your sin, lift up your hand very high so I can see it. The building is large. Lift it up right now. Pastor Greg, I need Jesus. Hold up your hand at the back. I see that hand. I see that hand. How many others? Lift up your hand. Others, you need to get right with God. Some of you are backslidden. You were saved. You turned back. Lift up your hand. God bless you. Thank you. Others, I want to get right with God. Lift up your hand. Lift up your hand. God is going to touch you right there. God bless you. God bless you. How many others? Anybody else? Quickly, we're going to do other things. Now's your chance. Thank you. I see those hands at the far back. God bless you. On the sides, you need to respond. I want every one of you that lifted your hand, stand up to your feet right now. Stand up where you're at. Stand up right now. Don't wait. Stand Stand, stand, yes, at the back, on the side, in the middle. Amen. I want to pray with you. Where you're at, we're going to pray, and I'm going to ask God. I want you to say this out loud. Say, Father God, I admit I am a sinner, and I have broken your commands, but I believe in Jesus Christ, that he died on the cross for my sin, and I am a sinner. Please forgive me. Come into my heart and change me from the inside out by a miracle of your power. I choose 
to turn away from my sin right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's thank God for saving these people. Oh, God, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord God. Praise God. Now, I've given a challenge before we go into the exciting announcements in church planting. I've given you a challenge. I believe that God has spoken to me something prophetic. I've given you a biblical foundation. This is God's will through the Bible. But I do believe this is something that God is wanting to do individually. He's wanting to do it in salvation. He's wanting to do it in churches. If you can have vision to believe and pray for a hastening, I want you to stand up to your feet. By standing, you're saying, I'm going to believe God for a hastening work. I'm going to believe God for my unsaved family and friends and people I care about. I'm going to believe God in our church that dry bones are going to live again. I'm going to believe God that he's going to breathe upon our city. Sinners will be drawn supernaturally. Miracles will occur. Miracle money will be released for the will of God. If you're going to believe that, lift up your hands and let's ask God right now. Oh, God. We need you right now. God, a hastening work. Time is short. I need you. Oh, God, every one of these people, they need miracles of hastening. God, we have loved ones. You must let light shine by a miracle. Hurry your word. Oh, God, we need miracle conversions. God, we want people to be drawn. They will get saved. They will leave their sin. They will quickly fall in love with you. They will win their families and friends. They will surrender to your call in their life. They will get involved in ministry, become disciples, and be launched out. God, there will be a miracle provision of money. God, quickly you will provide money. Quickly you will provide buildings. God, you're going to help us. Churches will be birthed and quickly come to fruition. Oh, God, I know that you're able to do this. You are a faithful God. Nothing can stop you. Nothing can hinder you, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus, for everything you're going to do in the name of Jesus Christ. Now let's praise the Lord together right now. Hallelujah, Lord God. Oh, God, we believe you, Lord God, for good things. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Faithful God. Faithful God, I thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank God. I want you to be seated just for a moment. We're going to move on to some other things. Amen. I feel the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Woo. I wish I was getting planted out tonight. <laughs> Maybe I'll just plan myself. <laughs> oh, thank God. God is so good to us. We do have uh, numbers uh, of announcements. We want to begin. We just want to recognize we have some workers that are coming back for redirection. And we are believing God that God is going to refresh them and uh, re-aim them for ministry again. But we want to recognize some of these are not here, uh, but we're recognizing each of them going uh, out of Longview, Texas, into Redlands, California, Albert and Brianna Ruiz. And we thank God for them. Coming out of Bakersfield, California, into Northeast Heights, Albuquerque, New Mexico, Charlie and Espy Lucero. And coming out of Tulsa, Oklahoma, into Northeast Heights, uh, Albuquerque, New Mexico, Andrew and Alina Cordova. And coming out of Kerrville, Texas, 
into the Mother Church in Uvalde, Victor and Julissa Reyes. And we thank God for each of these. We did have a, a number of evangelists. I just want them to stand to their feet and be recognized. Uh, uh, out of Athens, Georgia, Stephen Blastowiktorski are going to be evangelizing. We thank God for them. Out of McAllen, Texas, Albert and Narcy Berkeley are going to be evangelizing. Out of Las Vegas, New Mexico, Adam and Lizette Peeble will be evangelizing. Out of Waltham Forest in the UK, Steve and Lisa Gabriel. And out of Ogden, Utah, Donnell and Kirian Butler will be evangelizing, thank God. Amen. Then we had some exciting announcements uh, internationally last night. We're going to begin there. And uh, going into uh, Leone, American Samona, uh, American Samoa out of Prescott, Arizona, and Indio, California, Tim and Amanda Jones. And they're going to come. Please. Going into Ica, Peru, out of Prescott, Arizona, Juan and Giselle Fifield. <laughs> Going into uh, Corozal, Belize, out of Clovis, New Mexico, Frank and Olga Beeman. Going into Calao, Peru, out of Las Vegas, New Mexico, Jaime and Georgia Cruz. <laughs> and going into Nassau, Bahamas, out of Bullhead City, Arizona, Jonah and Talisha Lane. And then we have three workers that are planted from international churches, could not be with us, but going into uh, uh, Tarija, Bolivia, out of Satellite El Alto, Bolivia, Jesus and Elizabeth Conde. <laughs> going into uh, Itaose, Antanarivo, Madagascar, out of Ansira Bay and Ampilo, uh, Pifaloa, and Tenerivo, Madagascar, Jean Elaine and Claudia Roberson. And going into Andre Noro, uh, Ambi Habao, Madagascar, this is out of the church in Ansira Bay, Madagascar, that's Bruno and Volola Nina Rampanarivo. Thank God. And then we have some new churches in the United States. Amen. <laughs> Going into Marysville, Washington, out of Everett, Washington, Cruz and Danielle Griffin. And we are rejoicing. This is the first church planted out of Everett, Washington. Thank God. Thank God. A wonderful victory. Going into Fallon, Nevada, out of Reno, Nevada, Bob and Bobette Burns. God. Going into Gardnerville, Nevada, out of Reno, Nevada, Parker and Faith Chenard. Thank God. <laughs> Go
going into Scottsdale, Arizona, out of East Phoenix, Arizona. That's uh, Pastor Willie Stewart, TJ, and Sabrina Horta. And we are celebrating with Pastor Stewart and the East Phoenix Church. This also is their first church planted. Praise the Lord. Thank God. Going into Eddyston, Pennsylvania, out of Upper Darby, Pennsylvania, Will and Amanda Brown. Going into North Las Vegas, Nevada, out of West Las Vegas, Nevada, Keith and Shanita Graham. Going into North San Jose, California, out of East San Jose, California, Sebastian and Maria Cox. <laughs> Thank God. Going into Chicago, Illinois, out of Farmington, New Mexico, Marilyn Ashina Yazzie. God. Chicago must fall. Amen. Thank the Lord. Pastor Campbell, his words have power. Thank God for that. Going into West Hemet, California, out of Yucca Valley, California, Jesse and Sierra Escalante. <laughs> Thank God. And then we have some changes. Not all of these people are here, but those that are here. Also, I want these changes to come up on the stage as well. Uh, taking the church in El Centro, California, out of Indio, California, Alex and Lily Cruz. They might not be here. And then this couple is not here, but uh, taking the church in Wichita, Kansas, out of Las Vegas, New Mexico, Johnny and Nita Lujan. Yeah. Taking the church in Santa Fe, New Mexico, out of Prescott, Arizona, Nate and Ashley Rush. cute little girl factor just went, they have six beautiful little girls. It just went down in our congregation, apparently. <laughs> and then uh, coming into the Albuquerque Blue Water Church to assist out of Socorro, New Mexico, Gerald and Cindy Salas. <laughs> and I don't believe they're here, but taking the church in Socorro, New Mexico, out of the Albuquerque Blue Water Church, New Mexico, uh, uh, Stephen and Marin Sanchez. Oh God. Oh God. Wonderful. Amen. A Prescott girl. I'm still bitter. <laughs> I'm still bitter, but anyway, I'll, I'll get over it. Thank God. Aren't these wonderful? And God is doing...
Praise the Lord. Thank God for his goodness. We are rejoicing eight international and nine in the U.S. Brand new churches for Jesus Christ. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. I want these men, first of all, I need uh, Pastor Rich Cox. He's going to come help us. He's the blessing of my life. He's going to help us arrange in these couples. God bless you. I want uh, Pastor Joe Campbell, Rich Ruby, Mark Olson, Paul Stevens, Tom Payne, Nigel Brown, Daryl Elliott, Jesse Cluck, Tori Williams, Garrett King, Jesse Morales, and Juan Pablo Cardo. They're going to come and they're going to help us pray for these couples. I'm asking, this is very important, that hastening work, I need you to help pray it on these couples. So please, if you will, pay attention, stretch your hands toward them as we pray, and we are going to believe God for a hastening work. Jesse has microphones. They're going to bring... Let's actually begin. Let's begin with the three international works that are uh, not here. And if we'll do that, and then we'll get those that are here. If you'll put up the picture, first of all, uh, whoever's running the, the computer... Uh, please put up the, the church in Tariha.